Hey, I'm Dr. Matt Geller. I'm here with my friend uh, Jessica Chan. And man, fourth fourth year optometry student at ICO now. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were hanging out. You we were in your first year. What's the journey been like? Was it was it amazing? Scary? Yeah, it, um, it's been great. So that was actually my first conference where I met you here, and yeah. then now this is my last conference as a student. We've and come so, full circle. Mm -hmm. Do you think that folks who don't network or who kind of just say, you know, I don't want to spend the money on a conference mm -hmm. or take it out of my schedule, I got to study, mm -hmm. are they doing themselves a disservice? I think so. I think obviously you have to have good grades, but it's not always about your grades. You know, it's about how you connect with people and having that connection comes, goes a lot farther than just getting good grades. You yep. know, it helps with getting jobs, especially like where I, I'm looking for a job right now. And that's really been really helpful. I think that's like such sage wisdom right there. And for me, I, sh I always say, like, I strived for a B. I mm -hmm. didn't feel like an A would get me that much further. Mm -hmm. I'd be a great doc no matter what. Mm -hmm. But taking the time between that B and that A mm -hmm. would help me to network and meet people. Is that the strategy you took, your friends took? Um, I mean, you I definitely would love an A. An <laughs> A minus is cool, yep. but, um, you know, if I, like there was a conference that weekend and I had an exam on Monday, I would try to do the conference and the exam well too. So right, right. I would never hold back because of an exam. What else did you get involved with and in throughout optometry school? I know you were involved with optometrystudents.com uh -huh. and other projects. What were some of those? Yeah, so I edit for optometrystudents.com. So that was a great way to meet students from all the schools across the country. And then I also work off campus at a private practice. Oh, nice. And so I did that second year until now. And so that's been really good to build my skills and like learn more about practice management. Yeah. yeah. What are your roles at that practice when you're there? And so how I, often are you there? So I work two days a week. I started as a technician. Wow. And now um, I started a vision therapy program there. So I'm also a vision therapist. Man, yeah. look good for you. Yeah, thanks. Do you think it's hard to juggle clinical learning, all these things? You just have to be a go. I mean, you're a go-getter, yeah. right? But would mm -hmm. you would you recommend that uh, other students start, you know, either even just mentoring or shadowing? Yeah, do as much as you can. You know, even if it's just one day a week or on Saturdays. Um, it's also a good break from school and a good way to apply what you've learned in the classroom. Right. A little bit more real-world setting. Do you think that that's going to help job prospects at the end? That kind of like. You know, meeting docs in your community? Yeah, I think so. Um, so they're not ready to hire me right now. They don't have, they have enough doctors and not yeah. enough planes, but they each have recommended me to other doctors and I've interviewed with people that they know and, you know, word yeah. of mouth, so. I remember when I was ready to get my first position, I was in New York mm -hmm. and I wanted to move to San Diego where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the method that I chose was I sent out an email to like 50 different people, mm -hmm. kind of a standard email, you know, made it personal. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the people that I met over the time mm -hmm. and one converted out of 50 49 failures one you know one converted right. one actually made it and so I think there's a, a volume game to the networking right. side of things you know I kind of followed in your footsteps I think you wrote <laughs> an article about that and so when time came when people were deciding on residencies or jobs I kind of went through my list too and was yeah. like who can I hit up and just say hey like I'm looking for a job if you know of anyone like yep. let me know I'm in this area so how did you craft your value I mean you, know, you get to the end of school and kind of mm -hmm. you're going to be in interviews, you're going to be forming your career. Is it a certain clinical focus that you focused mm -hmm. on, a certain goal? I mean, what makes you different? So I think I really want to stay in private practice and I've worked in so many different settings as and have had so many different roles. Um, so that's kind of where I set myself apart is doing all the extracurricular things in school. You know, I yep. know how to juggle all those things. Yeah, I think that's a, a talent that, that must be had and, and it's... We don't hear it from our teachers, our professors, because ultimately their job is to make sure. Focus on the grades. Yeah, and get the grades. Part. Exactly. Um, but I think, you know, like life advice is to plug yourself into things outside. So clearly mm -hmm. you've done that. Totally. What were some of the biggest challenges you experienced throughout school? Well, juggling all of that can be hard when you have boards coming up. Part, um, part one, man. Part one. You glad but that's over? No one talks about part two and three. Because <laughs> when you're taking part two, you're on your externships, you right. know? So that was actually really hard to study for. Um, and juggling that. Mm -hmm. Part three actually was really stressful for me because I wasn't at school when I took it and right. so I had to practice kind of on my own. Any tips that you can give others to get through all that testing? Um, set a schedule for yourself. Okay. So I do like the old school calendar way where I plan out what I'm gonna do each day yep. and like week by week. What's the advice for a first year? What's the advice for a second year? What's the advice for a third year? And what's the advice for a fourth year? So first year, don't be scared to go to the conferences. I think I was really intimidated in the, in the beginning because I was like, I don't know anything and I'm going to walk into this and be like totally overwhelmed. Yep. But um, people love talking to new students. Um, so there's that. And then second year, 
building on that more and being more confident in you know your path and kind of figuring out what you want to do and then third year really taking advantage of that and, and exploring like maybe the different specialties that you're interested in and pick good externships that'll help you kind of define That's that such a like big decision yeah because it'll really help you form the different perspectives um help you see different patient populations different modes of practice and in fourth year i would say take the advantage of all your externships and use it you know as much as you can because really at the end of the day you're paying for it what it, what's next for you and kind of what challenges are you experiencing now mm -hmm. that school's coming to an end yeah, so I've started looking for jobs and I'm interviewing um, and I'm applying for my license. So using nice. all the resources that are out there to help you yep. do your license, like New Grad Optometry has been really helpful yeah. in outlining the steps on what you have to do and how sure. to get credentials and all of that. And I'm going to take a short break and go to Iceland because nice. treat yourself. <laughs> yeah, when I graduated, I did travel. I traveled throughout school as well. I, I, I did too. Life's kind of too short. I think you've got to experience it as you go. I agree. I'm like the you only live once mentality. Take advantage of the break weeks because, you know, yeah. you'll never get that again where, you, you know, you have weeks off in between each quarter. Yep. Might as well use it. Yep.